In this module, we will discuss the topic of bond interest expense under the straight line amortization method. So as an overview, we are talking about a company that issues bonds to borrow money. They issue those bonds to several smaller bondholders, and in return for borrowing the money, they pay interest. The company will pay the bondholders interest. So what we need to be concerned with in this discussion is not only the cash interest that is paid, but perhaps more importantly, the interest expense that needs to be recognized on the income statement. So there is a difference unless the bond is issued at par. If the bond is issued at par, or in other words, at face value, no premium, no discount, then the cash interest paid will match the interest expense. However, any time we have discount or premium that we need to amortize, this will lead to an adjustment to interest expense. Specifically, if the bond was issued at a discount, then over time, as we amortize that discount, we're going to see an increase in interest expense above and beyond the amount of cash interest that's actually paid for that period. If we have a bond premium that will be amortized over the life of the bond, this will decrease interest expense below the amount of cash paid. So let's talk about the carrying value of the bond. Initially, this carrying value is equal to the issue price itself. If the bond is sold at a premium, the issue price, and therefore the carrying value, will be higher than the par value, higher than that face value. In fact, it will be the face value plus any unamortized premium. On day one, that's the entire amount of premium because we haven't amortized anything. If this issue, this bond was issued at a discount, it will be face value less unamortized discount. So what this is basically saying is that a premium bond will have a carrying value higher than face value on day one. A discount will have it lower than face value. What we will see is that over time, as the discount or premium is amortized, the carrying value will get closer and closer to the face value so that by the time we mature this bond, by the time this, mature, this bond matures at the end of its life, they will equal. The carrying value will equal the par value or the face value, and then we can liquidate the bond without any gain or loss. That doesn't always happen, but that will be another module where we discuss the retirement. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here, the first one, the bond sold at $110,000 with a face value of $100,000. So that tells us the carrying value is $110,000 initially, but it will decrease over time as the premium is amortized. It's going to get closer and closer to face value. Now let's say the bond sold at $90,000 with a face value of $100,000. In this case, the carrying value is $90,000, but it will increase over time as the discount is amortized. So what we're going to see here, and this is uh, the, the numbers, what I have here really aren't indicative of the actual example we just used. This is just to make a point here to show that whatever the discount bond starts at, in this case, let's just say the face value was right around 60000 and this is a very extreme example, but if the discount bond, let's say, was issued at 10000 which is a considerable discount, it's a little unrealistic, but if it was issued that low, over time, it will work its way up until eventually at retirement, we have the face value of the bond equaling the carrying value. These lines that are sloping are basically the carrying value at any point in time. The premium will start off higher and it will work its way down until it eventually equals the face value. So again, this is a completely separate example, but the way this would look on the balance sheet in your liability section is that you would have the bonds payable less any unamortized discount that you had, and that would give you the carrying value of the bonds. For a discount, it's always going to be less than the, the actual liability until maturity where they will equal. There will be no discount left to amortize and the carrying value and the bonds payable amount will be one and the same. So that's how it would show up on the balance sheet. So now for us to really clarify this, let's take a look at the journal entries. 
Now, even though we've covered bond issuance in another module, I want to bring it back here with a, a real live example just to refresh and to help clarify why the entries are as they are. So in this case, we are talking about a premium bond. When we issued the bond, we would debit cash for a higher price, whatever the purchase price was. In this case, we're saying it's a $112,289 purchase price. The bonds payable will be credited for the actual par value. In this case, the par value is $100,000. The difference in this case for a premium will end up going on the credit side and it'll be the difference between the issue price and the liability face value. So we'd have a premium of $12,289. Now that premium goes on the credit side. That premium is considered an adjunct liability account, and that means that it adds to the value of the liability. That carrying value in this case would be the higher of the two amount. It'd be $112,289. So now notice we credited the full premium to amortize that premium over the life of this bond. Every time we have interest, we have to debit it. If we start off with a big credit, we're going to have to see small debits every year, every payment. Now it's important to know we are under the straight line method of bond amortization. So first of all, we have to take a look at what would we credit for cash. We're going to pay cash, so we have to credit cash for the actual cash interest we pay. This example is a 10% bond, so $100,000 times 10% means that we are actually going to pay $10,000 in cash. So that one's one of the easier pieces of this entry. Under the straight line method, the next step is to figure out what amount of premium are you going to amortize. Now the straight line method, what that implies is that every period is going to have the exact same amount of premium to amortize. It's a 10 period bond in this example. So we're going to take that $12,289 and divide it by 10. We get a rounded $1,229 premium amortization. Now because we already have some debit from this premium, we don't need as much debit for the interest expense. The total debits and credits have to balance out, so we can only afford $8,771 in interest expense. And when we add that to the $1,229, that gives us the $10,000 we have on the credit side. So that's the way you would calculate interest expense under the straight line method. It's the difference between your cash payment and your discount or premium or in this case, premium. It, with a premium, it's the difference between the two. The way to remember it is just remember what side it goes on, what side your premium has to go on. We started with a credit, so we have to debit it to reduce it, and then it's the one-tenth amount. Now let's flip over and look at a discount. In this case, the cash debit for the purchase price, the, the issuance itself, is going to be less than $100,000. In our example, it's $87,711. And by the way, we'll see where those prices came from a little bit later. And then we will, uh, we have the $100,000 credit to bonds payable. So the difference has to be the discount. Now we need $12,289 on the debit side in order to equal our $100,000 credit to bonds payable. So notice, under a discount, we start off with a debit. That debit is known as a contra liability account. Basically tells us that the discount on bonds payable offsets the liability. Now the interest expense entry, let's go to the credit to cash. It's still going to be that same $10,000 because it still has a 10% stated rate. Now, in this case, to amortize the discount, we have to credit it because it started off with a debit. It's still one-tenth of $12,289. So it's still $1,229 rounded. It's just on the credit side now. Now we need a debit that is large enough to balance out to both of these credits. 
So our debit to interest expense now is going to be more than the cash interest paid. As we said earlier, the interest expense under a debit bond is more than the cash paid. So to explain what we've been doing there, first of all, we had to calculate the cash interest paid, which is simply the face value multiplied by the stated interest rate. That's very important. It's the stated rate. It's not the market rate. And this is the key difference between the straight line method and the effective interest method that we will talk about in a separate module. The way we amortize the discount or premium is in equal amounts over the life of the bond. So we take, well, if we just said we had a $10,000 discount or premium, we would divide that by 10 years to get $1,000 per year to amortize. In our earlier example, it wasn't quite so round. And again, the interest expense is going to be the cash interest plus the discount amortization. It's going to be higher than the cash interest. If it's a premium, it would be the cash interest minus the premium amortization. Discounts and premiums work in, in opposites. They work against one another. So now let's talk about what the difference is between the two. As I mentioned with the straight line method, we calculate interest expense by taking cash plus or minus the discount premium amortization. In other words, we calculate cash and then the discount or premium amortization first, and we back into interest expense. Under the effective interest method that we'll be looking at later, it's we don't back into interest expense, we back, back into discount or premium. The premium or discount under the effective interest method is going to be amortized based on the difference between the interest expense and the cash interest paid. So here, you know, we can still calculate the cash interest paid the same way we did before, face value times stated rate, so that hasn't changed. But now we calculate the interest expense by taking the carrying value of the bond. Now notice this is not par value, this is not issue price. This is the carrying value which will change every time. It will decrease if it's a premium or it will increase if it's a discount every year. So we take whatever that beginning of the year's carrying value is multiplied by the market interest rate. Very important that we use the market rate there. So now let's look at how this all comes together in an amortization schedule. The term amortization schedule, that basically shows us how the bond amortizes over its life, how the carrying value changes, what the interest expense is going to be every period. So what I have first here is a line zero or a year zero just to show what our beginning balances were. In this one, as we said before, the beginning carry, carrying value is $112,289. So on that day, we have $12,289 unamortized. Notice that the ending value carries forward to become next year's beginning carrying value. Cash payment is always going to be $10,000 in this example. We don't even have to recalculate that every year. It's the same amount. Under the straight line method, premium amortization is also going to be the same. We said it was twelve twenty nine. Now, because the first, the first and third items are the same, interest expense would also be equal every year. So what that tells us is that under the straight line method, all three of those pieces of the journal entry are identical year after year. Now, what will happen is your premium, your balance will reduce over time until it finally hits zero. Your ending carrying value for your bond, it'll start off higher than, than face value and it'll work its way down until it eventually hits face value at the end of your final year. With a discount, the amortization schedule starts off low, below the discount at the carrying value, and it works its way up until it finally hits the carrying value. Now notice in this final year, I have a whoops, I have a one dollar error here, so to speak. It's basically a rounding variance. What would actually happen there is in your final year, you would have to adjust that last year's discount so that it exactly 
it was basically 1228 so we brought this down to zero and we get the carrying value down to exactly 100,000 so that's just I left that there to show you that the rounding will add up and it, in this case will cause a one dollar error but notice everything else is still the same the cash payment interest expense and discount amortization are the same your carrying value starts off low and works its way up to the $100,000 face value as your unamortized discount is used up. That takes us to the end of this section.